Welcome back to Fight Night. And we are set for boxing action. And the aforementioned George Acevedo, three-time New York Golden Gloves champion, making his pro debut. Getting set to take on Pedro Rodriguez. Let's get the official introductions from ring announcer Ward Todd. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a night of world-class professional boxing from the beautiful Paramount at Madison Square Garden. Tonight's officials have been assigned by the New York State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Randy Gordon. In attendance at ringside, Commissioner Rose Trentman, Deputy Commissioners Richard Herring, Steve Acunto, and Tony Mazzarella. Our judges tonight are Al DeCesar, George DeGabriel, and Harry Papacarolambus. Your physician is Dr. William Lathan and the timekeeper of the bell, Cecilio Pedraja. Our referee for this first contest is Harry Smith. In the Bantamweight division, four rounds. Introducing first in the blue corner. Wearing the red trunks and weighing at 121 pounds, his professional record, one win and a loss from San Juan, Puerto Rico, here is Pedro Rodriguez. And in the red corner, wearing the white trunks, red stripe, weighing 119 pounds, he is a four-time New York Golden Gloves champion, making his professional debut from New York City, George the Ace Acevedo. From the fighting Acevedo family, the three Acevedos, all Golden Gloves champions. Brother Daniel was supposed to be on the card tonight, but uh, his fight fell through. And Brother Nick remains as an amateur. He's the youngest of the three. Well, you know, next year we'll see Nick making his debut, hopefully here. Probably. <laughs> Final instructions have been handed out. This one is scheduled for four. Billy Giles in the corner of George Acevedo. You talk about a baby face fighter that uh, George Acevedo suddenly has that baby face. How about the way he carries that left hand, Gil? But I see he's been around. He's he's had so many amateur fights. Uh, so much work in the gymnasium that he's already has the style of a guy that's been pro for quite a while. Rips that left hook to the body of Rodriguez. You know, Sam, there's nothing wrong with carrying that left hand low as long as you get it up there when you're getting the other guy's punching range. Acevedo going to the body again. With good leverage on those left hooks. What about defensively, Gil, as far as holding that left hand down? Well, again, uh, as long as you're not within the other guy's punching range, but uh, you can nail with, with sneak right hands, but he has so much confidence in his ability and his reflexes that he thinks he can slip them and, uh, and block them. And you know, when, when he throws that, I used to call that an up jab. I used to teach my fighters to fight like that on occasion. Like in the middle of a round, all of a sudden drop your left hand. When he's throwing that left hand, he's like throwing it almost off his knee. And it's very difficult for the other guy to pick it up and block it. Now, watch where they, that's what I call an up jab. See how he brings that up, mm -hmm. Sam? I used to have my guys do that for a while and they go back to keep your hands up and anything to confuse the other guy. The right hand got in there. As Acevedo opened up, a little talking going on between the two fighters. George probably wants to know how the weather is down in San Juan. <laughs> It seems so calm to kid. Very calm, very poised. All right, great. Rodriguez has done very little. Okay, great. Thus far, Acevedo carrying the fight. to the body continues to be very effective for Acevedo. Now he opens up with a three-punch flurry. Bangs to the body again. Time 
winding down in round one. Dirt track racers in the Southwest are heading for Devil's Bowl Speedway and the 19th annual Winter Nationals, Friday and Saturday, November 6th and 7th. See four big classes, street stocks, dirt south late models, super sprints, and the wild outlaw sprints. Two big nights, two giant shows. Call now for tickets to the 19th annual Winter Nationals, Friday night, November 6th, and Saturday, November 7th, only at Devil's Bowl Speedway, Mesquite, Texas. If you're in business, you know this sound is music to your ears. And maybe you'd like to hear that sweet sound of success more often. Whatever your business, one of the most efficient ways to increase it is to advertise on cable TV. Cable TV targets your sales message to buyers in your shopping area. Affordably. Effectively. Cable TV advertising. It works. Call Doug Barrington, 637-7744. For round two, scheduled for four pro debut of three-time New York Golden Gloves champion George Acevedo in the white trunks. Challenged by Pedro Rodriguez in the red trunks. And often you look for an amateur stepping up into the pro ranks and here a little hot dog from Acevedo. But how he'll adjust and he, he's really under control, Gil, I think, and uh, seems like he's been fighting professionally for years. Yeah, but Sam, you're not, you're, he's not fighting the way a bantamweight normally fights. He's fighting like he's a heavyweight. You know what? He's just standing still, and it's tough to get off the mark when you're from a still position. Now, I'd like to see him moving a little bit more, using his legs a little bit more, as far as his boxing is concerned. You know, you, uh, you can be a tough guy, but there's always somebody tougher, and that's when you have to outmaneuver him. He's not, not doing too much maneuvering. Now he's moving a little bit, but not the way a bantamweight moves. There you go, nail with a good spade right hand, hand by Rodriguez. He didn't throw too many in the first round. We talked of the fighting Acevedo family and Daniel and brother Nick and we're told that there is a, another brother, only 10 years old, Joshua, who's 65 pounds and already has won three Metropolitan Junior Olympic titles. And the father says that he's the best of all of them. Well, he may be the best of 10, Sam, but you know, I'm, I'm really not uh, for a kid boxing uh, in competition when he's 10 years of age. I think everybody, every boy in America should be taught how to box and be in some kind of inter-Euro competition, but uh, I don't think they should be actually be in competition until they're at least 14 years of age. Why not, Gil? Well, I, it's just the body is not mature enough, even at 14, but at 10, uh, they're not mature. And you know, these little kids, they hurt each other a lot more than you think they do because they don't have the skills to slip punches. So when they get hit with a, a, a left jab, all of a sudden you see them, their nose bleeds. Uh, things like that happen to them. I mean, have you ever seen a little kid ever hit you in the nose, Sam? Mm -hmm. That's easy to hit, you know. <laughs> Did you feel it? <laughs> a lot. No, but that's really true. You watch these young kid bouts, and you see so many nosebleeds. And that's because the, the, the kids haven't learned to really move with a punch and slip a punch and slide. And they take the full impact of the punch. Acevedo continues to box well and stay away from Rodriguez whenever he gets close. So Rodriguez just missed the right hand there. It seems to me there are tremendous benefits from the those kid gloves programs. Yes, again, starting at 14. End of round two. See all of the action of 1993 Rangers baseball with the best available seats for the final season in Arlington Stadium with Rangers season tickets. By purchasing season tickets, you will have the opportunity for the best seats in the new ballpark in 1994 and the All-Star Game in 1995. Plan now to catch all of the exciting times of Rangers baseball in the final season at Arlington Stadium. For season ticket information, call 817-273-5100. Out for round three. How do you have the first two rounds scored, Gil? I'm giving them both to uh, Acevedo a lot closer in the second round. Won the first round big. Rodriguez trying to step up to pace his pace a little bit. Acevedo has boxed well. There's a foul by Acevedo. Which was? Having the ropes and losing it to get leverage on the punch. 
And he just did it again. Doing again. Referee Harry Smith now has warned Acevedo about doing it. I think he's gotten a little too cute from getting nailed, Sam. He is getting nailed the last couple of rounds, more so in this round. And despite the fact that he's had so much experience, he seems to be a little tired right now. We're only into the third round. Notice that mouth open, Sam? Yeah, he's breathing heavily. Shots the way he did in the first round and backing up. Seems to be some blood in the mouth of Acevedo and a caution for butting to Rodriguez. I believe he just took a timeout there, Acevedo. Took a couple of real deep breaths. And again, we're only into the third round of the fight. Nailed with another right hand. Rodriguez doing a good job and just pushes Acevedo. Almost looked like it was a street fight for a while. A stern warning from referee Harry Smith. Acevedo comes back. Rodriguez doing the chasing here and applying the pressure. Well, that was a low blow with the right hand. And Damn, that was really south of the border. Those are the kind that hurts him. You know, you can hear with the punch most of the time in the cup. The cup takes and absorbs the, the punch. But when you get hit underneath and it lifts the cup up, that's when you get hurt. And that's what happened to this kid just then. He really got hit low. He lifted the cup up. The clock con has continued to tick off on the scorecard, on the scoreboard above the ring. The referee never never called time. Now he has signaled the fighters together. Rodriguez has been very aggressive. Good body shots from Acevedo. Acevedo slips. And the third round comes to an end. Rodriguez really angered over the low blow. He's back into his corner. This is the Acevedo corner with Billy Giles there. Come on, let's go to work. Head down, head down. Come on, you can eat this round. Let's take a look at that low blow. Oh, man. You see Sammy actually underneath and lifted up the cup. That was about as low as you can get. Now let's take another look from a different angle. There you can see, right under the cup. If he would have missed, he, he had to... He was close to missing underneath. Yes, yes. I mean, Pedro, ese rolo, Could have hit him in the ankle and broke his ankle. Este rolo es el que vale, okay. Tiene que estar a pa' de ella, por todos lados. Ni lo salude. A pelear por todos lados. Estamos. No pis, no pis. Pedro Rodriguez. Billy got fired up. Started to come on in the second round. Had a good third round. I gave him the third round. I did too, Sam. All right, so he's about on the line here in this fourth and final round. First time Acevedo has been to a fourth round in his boxing career. Again, Acevedo grabbing the ropes and draws another warning from the referee. Acevedo was spending an awful lot of energy early. A lot of energy early. Whether he could do it for the full three minutes, we'll have to wait and see. Good right hand got in by Rodriguez. Two good punches. Right hand, left hook. Clean punches. Blood in the mouth of Acevedo. He's complaining again about Rodriguez using his head. Both men missing. Acevedo throwing a lot of punches, but he's missed a lot. He's throwing more punches than Rodriguez. I don't know if Acevedo got overconfident after a uh, really good first round. 
Well, Sam really changed complexion. Right, right now, he's in. He's fighting for that first win, and he really wants it. But uh, this kid doesn't want to let him have it. That was two good, solid body punches by Acevedo. That's where he was really effective in the first round. Well, see, Sam, that's what you can see now why he was a Golden Glove champion. Sam, he's had to suck it up in this round. I really felt there would be a lot more tired at the end of this round. So far, he's uh, holding up pretty good. No breathing heavily. Took a deep breath. Arms down. Rodriguez trying, giving it his all, but is not landing very many punches here in the fourth round. Body shots by Acevedo. Sam, those are real amateur punches. You can see him getting set to throw that one from across the street. Another good right hand by Acevedo. Another good right one. From underneath. Now he tries to tie up Rodriguez, who won't allow it. Keeps throwing punches. Referee almost got clipped. Good right hand by Rodriguez. This is a Golden Glove fight, Sam. Final to the New York Golden Gloves. And you can see Acevedo is dead, tired. But look, look at the heart that kid has. He's throwing. Trying to stay away from. Rodriguez in the final seconds as we come to the bell. A good final round by Acevedo. Good tough battle. That was a good, that was a good, good test. test. Well, now Acevedo will know what the pros are like. A little different than those amateur fights. Scoring on a 10-point must system here. In New York, 10 points to the winner of a round, nine or fewer to the loser, three judges at ringside doing the scoring. Pedro Rodriguez, one and one coming in. Not as slick as George Acevedo, but certainly he has a lot of heart as well. Credit him with a lot of heart in battling Acevedo and really forcing the fight in the third round and again in the fourth. Here's a good straight right hand, a good left hook by Rodriguez. I thought Acevedo worked the body pretty well. well that's what he did, and that's what won him, in my opinion, his fourth round. There was one low blow, but... Uh, that one didn't hurt as much as right. the, oh, the one earlier. Not at all, Sam. I'll get more time in the gym for that order. Waiting the... Collection of the scorecards. And Ward Todd has them. And he'll announce the winner to us. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judge George de Gabriel scores the fight 39-37. Judge Al de Caesar saw it 39-37. And Judge Harry Papa Carolamba scores it 39-37. For your winner, George the Ace Acevedo. A successful pro debut. George Acevedo winning three of the four rounds and taking a 39-37 decision on the cards of all three judges. A nice debut. It certainly was. And the judges, you and I, we were in line with the judges for once. <laughs> Acevedo had to struggle for the win. He had to work for it. It wasn't a walkover by any means. Yes, in the middle of that third round, he was starting to really feel it. That uh, champion's heart came through.